Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays. We're taking out the ME410. Uh, for those that love this aircraft, they really love it. Uh, I haven't. Not everybody likes this plane. It's a little bit. Um, it can be quirky if you're not used to the three different gun types configuration, but once you get a good handle on it, this pumps out more damage than any of the other tier six heavies. So you do have a lot of power here. In addition to that, the aircraft is fast. It has good, like great altitude performance. And it also sports a tail gunner. So it's surprising how much that comes into play in this battle. So ME410, uh, really cool looking aircraft, but um, it's kind of funny because the BF 110 series was the Luftwaffe really liked that plane it was really good but they wanted to develop not necessarily Luftwaffe but the air aviation industry wanted to develop another heavy fighter so they actually came out with something called the ME210 which is another premium I have at tier 5 that looks nearly identical to this aircraft but it turns out that the uh, pilots actually hated that aircraft because it had really poor handling and it just felt weird and it didn't fly very well. So they're like, why, why do we even have this? I already have the 110. The 110 was great. Why do we have this 210? Well, they went back to the design, the, the drafting board, and they modified the design and tried to make it better. And what they ended up discovering is that the vertical stabilizer wasn't tall enough. And when you don't have a tall enough vertical stabilizer, the one sticking straight up and down, what ends up happening is, is the tail will actually slide side to side. So you lose its yaw control that makes the aircraft kind of stay straight so it doesn't kind of walk from side to side. So they actually increase the vertical stabilizer to make it better. Well, the 210 had got had gotten such a bad reputation from the pilots that flew it that they actually changed the designation even though they really just modified the 210 design in order to prevent people from coming into the aircraft with a preconceived notion that it was a bad airframe. Uh, now I hear that, that the 410 still had a bunch of issues. I can't remember what the exact issues were but it still had a bunch of issues but uh, despite that in-game it we're not seeing any of the errors modeled into it, so now it's just kind of a cool looking, better performing version of a 110. So we get to reap the, reap the rewards in digital gameplay, uh, but from what I understand, it wasn't much loved like the BF 110 was. So, to the battle. What are we doing? We. Guys, this had to be one of the most leisurely flights I've flown in a long time. You'll note that my movements with the mouse seldom are very jerky or quick. I'm making very gradual turns. I'm watching what the enemy's doing. And this is why I like flying heavy aircraft. I'm just watching, waiting for an opportunity. The hurricane couldn't chase after me. He's engaged with other aircraft. I'm like, okay, looks like you're busy. I'll come down here and say hi real quick. Throw a bunch of rounds with my big guns. Poof. And then I build back up my altitude, build back up my airspeed a little bit, or at least put some put some money in the piggy bank, in my altitude piggy bank, so I can trade it in later for airspeed again. But then I see a BF-110, or sorry, BF, I, <laughs> I see a B-17 up above me. And even though he's flying at really high altitude, I go ahead and hit my boost cooler and hammer down the boost in order to keep me airborne. And the damage output is more than enough to be able to contend with the incoming fire from the tail gunners. We knock out the threat. And now I get to look around and be like, okay, what's next? I see that there's a Corsair down here. Dip the nodes a little bit. Build up that speed. Try and get myself back down to optimum altitude anyways. I'm still looking at all the other aircraft and realize that there isn't anything really close to me. And that Corsair was in a bad energy state and I get to pick him off for being in my zone. Don't be up here, this is where I live. Now, I could probably be defending the airfield. I could be going back and defending the command center, but my team is already making short work of their command center and most of their players were hovering around the center zone. So my force multiplier was pushing a bunch of people back to respawn and giving my players a little bit more time and not having to worry about the center. Now as a heavy, we can also go in and take out some of this bomber flight. 
and we're able to get a bit of damage on that first aircraft and knock it out very quickly. Guns are getting a little bit hot. Uh, maybe stick on that aircraft just a little bit too long. Throw a couple of tail gunner rounds into it, but realize that's just not going to happen. So rather than going right back after that bomber flight, I know that the next threat's going to be this Yak-9. So I should pay attention to it. I'm lining up my shots and trying to catch that aircraft, but he's maneuvering a lot, so I'm not going to over-dedicate myself. I lit him on fire with the 792s, threw a couple of rounds from the tail gunner into him, and then the fire finishes him off. Again, all the techniques we've talked about before. You do your run, you do your boom and zoom, you don't get distracted by targets like the bomber flight, you run in on that yak, don't get over committed even though he was close to death because he could have out turned me and gotten that big cannon on me, and we just press on through, much like that aircraft we just went after. Look out for these ground attackers that try to ram you, but we, that hurricane was just taken out by my allies making a lateral turn because I don't want to build up too much speed, kind of like when I did the 209 V4 video just the other day, that you got to be careful going up against ground attackers because the up and over turn, you'll build up almost too much speed and you'll overshoot. So making more of a lateral turn, kind of like a sideways horseshoe if you would, and dropping back in and throwing some rounds into the ju 88 we lit him on fire, got some good damage out, gonna go ahead and hop in the tail gunner and I'm using the pitch up button that I've mapped to my Q key and we just got grade 2 and flying fighter badge. We gotta build up some altitude. I see that there's an aircraft coming in and I'm wondering if, I, if it's a ghost image of that target or if it's actually there. So I decide that I'm just gonna go for it. I hesitate a little bit but I can't let this one key, what is that, a key 80, 94 2? No, that wouldn't be a 94 2, a 43 2. He's making his way into the center zone, and all he'd have to do is kill one aircraft, which I believe he could do. A boomerang kill for him would have been easy. Now, we don't really get him on this first pass, but those rounds we sent out was enough to be able to pull, the bo pull him off the boomerang. Hop in the tail gunner, throw a couple more rounds out at him. Looks like he's turning around. So we're going to head up and over. At this time, we've been keeping that Key 43 completely occupied. And we get to make another run in. Unfortunately for us, our defense aircraft knocked him out. But now we're going to throw some rounds at the Hurricane 2. The battle may be over, but it doesn't mean we can't try and eke out. Oop, I guess I launched a rocket at the end there. But eke out a little bit more damage on the enemy. Since we stayed through the end of the battle as well, we also got Wing Legend and we got the McCampbell Medal. So, a good result for us. Let's go ahead and visit Passac and hear what he has to say about this aircraft back in the hangar. Ah, what a relaxing flight. That was so docile. Just very gentle, easy movements let the plane fly itself, and these are the results. This is why I fell in love with heavy fighters. They just get to decide where they want to go, what they want to do, and unless somebody is trying to hard counter you in an altitude fighter, usually you can plan out where the other heavies are going to be, where, what they're going to do, and you just go and take out targets at the areas that you know are the most significant and you just hold the line and do your job and this is what you get for it um, I, I, like I said I kind of grew up flying heavies in this game and this aircraft just behaves exactly the way that you want it to and there's a lot of people that really love this airframe and it's easy to see why we haven't even specialized this aircraft the pilot doesn't have Marksman 1 on here. He does have Engine Guru 1 and Aerobatics, or sorry, Aerodynamics Expert, as well as Firefighter, which, by the way, is a bad move. I'm going to have to change that because this thing's not going to be putting out fires via rolls. And it doesn't get caught on fire very much with a 65 resistance to fire. So bear that in mind and take it with a grain of salt because I don't fly this aircraft nearly as much as I should based on how much I enjoy it. We managed to take out 13 aircraft. Uh, probably could have knocked out another if I was being a little bit more deliberate, but 
why get overly aggressive when you don't need to? Oh, hey, cool. We're back into one of those again. Uh, like I said, firefighter, firefighter isn't going to be your best bet with this aircraft because it doesn't get lit on fire that much. Um, so I'm probably going to recoup that point once we get our next skill point, and I'm actually going to go ahead and throw that into Marksman 1, so we can ensure that, that uh, these guns are making better contact because gas-operated action is actually going to hurt our accuracy. But yeah, I, I don't think I've really met too many people that didn't like the ME410. I mean, historically it had issues, but it is a solid platform. I think it looks really cool, uh, and the firepower is just immense, and it does get you ready for what you're about to get into, because from here on out, most of the, Ger well, all of the German heavies are going to have relatively slow shell velocity, but hard-hitting guns, so this gets you ready for that transition, so... I think it's a good move, and if you can master it here, you'll have a much better time when you get into the 109Z, when you get into the 262, and even when you get to the HG2 and the HG3, even though those guns have a, have a faster shell velocity and fire a little bit further, in the grand scheme of things, they're actually, aircraft are traveling much faster, so you got to still pull a really large amount of leads, so... It all plays together in the long run. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay and the aircraft. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.